What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the quarantine zone again. And this time, after three long years, we return with Morton of Sirenia. Great to talk with you today, man. It's nice to be here again. Thank you. Yeah. So the brand new album, Riddles, Ruins, and Revelations, coming out this week. I'm looking forward to the rest of the world hearing it. Do you consider this just like a continuation or a picking up where you left off after Arcane Astral Aeons? Or do you think that this is almost like a new start or a brand new beginning for Sirenia in a way? Yeah, I feel that the two albums are quite, quite different. Um, it's basically what we try to achieve with every album. Um, try to bring, bring something fresh and new to the table. And uh, perhaps, you know, uh, Arcane Astral Aeons uh, was uh, more symphonic um uh while the the new album um are more inspired by uh, um you know sounds from the 80s perhaps you know a bit of a retro sounding keyboard some uh, electronic elements uh, um at least you know we gave those elements um uh, a bigger role to play on this new album so um i kind of feel you know like the album um it's, it has a little bit of the retro vibes, a little bit inspired by the 80s, but at the same time, it feels kind of fresh and modern. Uh, so we try to kind of achieve that combination um, between, uh, you know, going into the future and going back to, back to the past in, in the same time. So um, those are probably like the, the biggest differences between um, the new album and uh, the previous album, Arcane Astro Eons. Mm-hmm. Well, so with, with having like these more 80s influences, was this almost like a preconceived idea? Did you go into the songwriting process with this idea or was this kind of like just an experimental thing that kind of like a happy accident, as I like to say? Um, yeah, you know, normally when I start writing material for a new album, I always, you know, tend to spend the first couple of months um, experimenting and, and searching for a new direction. Um, and, and with this album, um, I invested in a lot of, of new gear, uh, equipment for the studio, a lot of keyboards and stuff like that. And so I spent a lot of the time, you know, kind of searching for new sounds, um, something that sounded, you know, kind of fresh and inspiring um, to work with. And so I kind of, you know, ended up in, on this path, you know, um, uh, started using a lot of these retro sounding um, keyboards and stuff. and. Um, and kind of just started building from there. And um, so, I, you know, that's how I kind of, you know, found um, the direction for the new album and, um, you know, been trying to implement those those new things with, uh, with the typical uh, Serenia sound and, and trying to find a balance between uh, new stuff and old stuff and, um, you know, leveling that out in the best possible way. And um, yeah, so it's it kind of, kind of find, found the direction of where to go pretty pretty early in the process. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I think, you know, your whole the whole Sirenia catalog has a lot of, demo, uh, demonstrates a lot of evolution. When you compare At Six and Sevens to, uh, you know, the 13th Floor to, you know, the Seventh Life Path to Tim Days of Delore to now, like, it, do, it just seems like, you know, there is a lot of elements that make each record sort of stand out in the catalog, right? Yeah, that, I mean, that's all always what we try to do with every album. Uh, we always try to bring something fresh and new to the table. And um, uh, I you know, definitely feel that we've been able to do so with, with the new album as well. And, and as you said, um, looking back at our back catalog, um, I think each and every album is kind of unique and different in a way. Um, and each of them you know, represents us where we were at musically at each given time. And, um, you know, it's one of those things that is, is really important to me as a musician and composer. And uh, one of those things that I feel really proud of, you know, that we've been able to to renew ourselves with, with every album. At, at this point, we have, uh, you know, released nine studio albums and our 10th studio album is, is coming out now on Friday. Um, and, you know, that we've been able to, you know, not you know, consistently delivering new albums over the years, but also renewing ourselves to a to a, a certain extent is, is something that I'm uh, very proud of. 
Definitely, definitely. And I'm excited for people to like really hear this. Do you feel that the two singles that you released off of Riddles, Ruins, and Revelations, Addiction Number 1 and We Come to Ruins, do you think that could almost serve as maybe like a good first taste or a good representation of what the whole album will sound like? Or is that just one little taste of it, the tip of the iceberg, as I like to say? It's still kind of the tip of the iceberg, but I felt like the first single... Um, is you know like the most commercial on, song on the album and uh, um, maybe the song on the album that is um, uh, uh, most different uh, compared to everything that we have done before. So it's it's something very uh, very new, definitely from from our side. You know, so when we released the single, we were you know we were pretty sure that. <laughs> This, uh, you know, it was going to be a song that the, the, the fans either loved or hated, you know, um, since it's so kind of different uh, compared to everything that we have done. And, and then that's exactly what happened to uh, with that single. I think maybe, you know, as the as the song sinks in a bit, you know, that the people get accustomed to the new sound and, and the new direction that they will they will come to like it. And, and so it seems now that it's been out for some weeks. Um, so uh, it was, you know, when we released the second one, we, we definitely wanted to pick a song that was, you know, more typical for Serenia and, and showing, you know, those typical uh, things that the fans are uh, used to, even though it was kind of in a in a new wrapping or in a, in a modernized way, um, you know. So I think that the two first singles shows um, uh, a little bit of the new and a little bit of the old in a way. and. But still, you know, it's it's. I still feel it's kind of like the tip of the iceberg because there's so many. I mean, the, all the songs on the album. There's ten songs plus a, a cover song, and the, those ten songs they are all, yeah, at least in my opinion, really different uh, from each other. So uh, I think there should be a little bit for everybody on the album. You know, whether the uh, the fans are, um, you know. Uh, really preferring our early days, our last days, something in between, or whether uh, looking for something totally new. Uh, I think they will find a little bit of everything in this album. Yeah, well, I, I, you're also damned if you do, damned if you don't. If you do like the same thing every album, people will criticize you for being repetitive. If you experiment too much, people will say you're inconsistent. So I think what really makes Sirenia such a really interesting band and really what pe makes it exciting to hear a new album is that you just go with your gut instinct and I feel like you have the best of both worlds. You have that sort of like symphonic epic sound that you know ties everything together, but you also bring in new qualities to it to keep it fresh. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's it's quite hard to, to make everybody happy. Um, and, you know, we are all different, you know, and we all have different preferences and, and so on and uh, different expectations and all that. And, uh, you know, we, we really just, you know, got to have to go with, with our gut, as you say, and do what feels right for us, you know. And uh, the thing with um, doing something different with every album has always been important to us for many reasons and and one of them of course also you know to, to keep thing interesting for us you know uh, uh being that we spend so much time um working on, on these uh, these albums you know and composing the material and and the recording process and all that we it, we need to bring something new and fresh with with each album to to keep that motivation there and, and the interest and, and the excitement and, and everything. Um, so, um, and, and you know, and some, some fans want that, you know, and some fans uh, prefer us to stay, you know, more like we have done before, but, but releasing the same album twice really doesn't make any sense for us. And uh, we have to take a step forward with each album. And, but at the same time, we always try to, to level it out in in the in best possible way, with with you know trying not to step too far away from the the basic musical concept uh, of Serenia, um, and try to level that out with with all the new elements that we, we try to bring in with with each album. Mm -hmm. When it comes to like getting that musical inspiration to write, when whether you think of a new musical idea or think of a story or something like that, does inspiration sometimes strike when you least expect it, or do you kind of have like a usual uh, realm that you are in in order to get that into that creative mode? Generally, I'm always 
very um, creative uh, during the the winter time in Norway. Um, you know, I think it's just the whole atmosphere. Um, you know, it's, it gets dark really early in the day. It's cold outside. You, we tend to not really spend much time outside in winter here in Norway. So we um, we spend a lot a lot of time inside, and it, it kind of gives this um, this um, this focus in a way. Uh, in summertime, for example, I'm always you know, having kind of a restless feeling. I want to go places and do things and all that. But in winter, I'm just, you know, spending my days in the studio and, and just being really focused and, and not feeling any restlessness, and at least not at the same level that I'm doing in summer. So generally, I'm just very inspired um, during uh, during the winter time. Uh, and, but I mean, inspiration can come from from many many places, you know, um, basically from maybe just watching a movie and there's a certain scene and uh, and, uh, and the music in the background and everything it just creates a certain mood or an atmosphere that can trigger inspiration in, in some way. So it's basically, you know, inspiration can come from everything uh, um, around me, you know, whether it's uh, music, books, movies, uh, nature, or just you know things things I'm going through in life generally. Yeah, I'd also imagine that inspiration strikes at very inconvenient times as well, right? Yeah, yeah, that happens to uh, <laughs> sometimes maybe like I'm sitting in the living room with my guitar and um, and I'm playing and, and in five minutes I'm expecting visitors and just the best idea ever just pops into my head like right before and you know, I kind of feel that I have to go to the studio and, and start working on this idea, but I can't. And so I, I normally, you know, always, you know, have my phone and just record the basic idea at least on my phone. So I have it there. And as soon as I have the possibility to get to the studio, then I will go there and I'll um, pick up the phone, listen to the riff again, and then start working on it while it's still fresh. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to like uh, the music in itself, because you're, you, do you actually have a music theoretical background that you apply into Sirenia as well, or are you completely on the self-taught side? Yeah, I'm pretty much on the self-taught side. Uh, I took uh, a few guitar lessons, learning how to play uh, blues, um, which is, I guess, maybe something that is is worth having there. You know, it. I learned some things, you know, with the basics of how to improvise and. And how to make um, you know like basic song arrangements and that but um, at this time you know I was 14 15 years old and I wasn't really into playing blues you know so I quit after uh, a few months and that was pretty much my my musical <laughs> education was a couple of uh, lessons uh, learning how to play blues on guitar so everything else is, is uh, self-taught yeah, I mean, I think I think it works out both ways. I know a lot of musicians who are like very, very theory oriented and it helps them. But I also know a lot of people who are completely self-taught. And I think, you know, both, there's good aspects to both because theory can sometimes dictate you too much, you know. So I think I, when I listen to Sirenia's music, I actually really get a good sense of freedom when I hear it. You know what I mean? That's how I feel. That's how I describe yeah. your music free, you know. Uh, absolutely. I, I think that's the could easily be the downside of, of uh, being too educated is that you you end up sounding like everybody else uh, that, that had an education and, and that's definitely not something that I wanted and um, I think that yeah as you said kind of shines true in, in Serenia's songs um, I guess probably if you know like really educated musicians and composers and so would listen to it uh, they would find parts, you know, that that wouldn't really make much sense to them, and, and that's what I like, you know. If that's what makes the band original, and then that makes makes us sound different. So uh, I was always a uh, kind of a fan of that, you know, being self-taught and, and finding out of things uh, myself. Uh, always really liked the the part with improvising and all this, and, and going in new directions and. I've had, you know, like really educated classical musicians in the studio, and and uh, at some certain parts when we asked them to to improvise, they were just they just met the wall instantly, and they had 
you know, no idea where to go. You know, if, if they didn't have the notes in front of them, they were completely lost as musicians. And so it's, it's kind of a, kind of a weird thing. And, uh, I, so in looking back at it now, I don't really, I don't really feel sorry, you know, that I didn't, um, go to music school or, or educate myself in that way. I feel kind of happy that I didn't do so. And instead, uh, found out of all these things on my own, you know, and just, I just went with my ear, you know, and, and with what ideas sounded good uh, and not thinking anything about whether this was, you know, correct in, in terms of theory or whatever. I didn't even have any clue about the theory. I just just went with, um, with whatever sounded good, basically. Perfect. That's perfect. And being that you've played with like a lot of bands as well, you know, you have 10 albums with Sirenia, you play with Tristia, uh, Tristania, you play with Elusive, you played with uh, Mortemia. Like I'd imagine working with new projects and experimenting and broadening your horizons has got to have taught you a lot of new things as well on the side, right? Yeah, working with, with different musicians is always uh, really inspiring and, uh, and a good thing. And yeah, definitely over the years, I've... Uh, I've learned, uh, you know, useful things from other musicians, from uh, producers that I've been working with, and technicians, and and so on. So, and you know, I've been always really kind of interested in these things, whether it's the production side of things, or whether it's uh, you know, basically composition or performing or whatever. So, I've been trying to, um, you know, take whatever um lessons learning and, and just soaking it all in along the way and, and trying to learn as much as possible as i went along yeah and you and you mentioned before that you look at almost every sirenia album as kind of like a self-portrait or like a good representation of who you personally are right yeah exactly and and at each given time as well you know when i listen back to the to the older albums um i feel you know they're all different and all of them kind of, you know, gives me an, a very clear idea of where I was, you know, musically at each given time, and also kind of personally in a way when, when listening to the lyrics and so on. So it's it's kind of um, kind of exactly what I wanted, and it's kind of interesting, you know, when looking back and and hearing, you know, that all all of the albums are are different. Yeah, and I almost feel like the album titles are always just so interesting because I've always wondered, like, what is an elixir for existence? What is on the 13th floor? You know what I mean? What is sort of like uh, the seventh life path? What does that mean? Do you, do you almost consider uh, Sirenia to be a very conceptually driven band as well? Uh, in terms of the, the album titles, I always, you know, um, was I always like the kind of titles that First of all, they got to cling really well, you know, when they say, when you say them, and uh, there has to be a, a deeper meaning behind it. You know, I never was, you know, really into the, the really direct stuff and all that. I, it has to be something that uh, that the listener has to think about, you know, to try to to really grasp the meaning behind it. And and uh, that's you know, it's like the same thing with all forms of art, really. You know. Um, when one person is is uh, listening to the album or is looking at a at a picture by a painter, for example, he makes up his mind and has all these thoughts and he interpretates the work in his way. And and then the next guy might have a like completely different opinion and, and interpretation about this exactly same thing. And that's what I think is beautiful about music and and art and and so on. And that's you know how I wanted to present my music and, and to stay on that kind of side, you know, that was open for interpretation. And, you know, I never really talked to, talked much about my uh, my titles or my lyrics or anything. You know, I always, you know, kind of felt it was the right thing to, to leave that up to the listeners. So I, I felt it wouldn't make much sense if if I, you know, who kind of made made the work, if I would explain exactly what it would mean, I was like, take the whole, uh, whole moment or the whole uh, whole meaning of the whole work, you know, just take that right away instantly. So <laughs> I always try to to avoid, you know, talking too much about uh, about those things and rather just leave it up to the listeners, you know. Yeah, well, I, that's what I think is so great about Sirenia is like the presentation of the work too. Like, you know, there's some bands where it's just the music, 
that, and that's all people want to hear. That's all we care about. But when I hear that Sirenia is making a new album or you release a new single, I'm always excited to see the album artwork. I'm always excited to hear what the title is. I'm always excited to hear, like, look at the lyrics. Like, I feel like there's a great presentational element that makes every part of Sirenia count, and going from the music to the live shows and everything in between. Yeah, I mean, we always try, you know, to, to connect all these parts that you mentioned, you know. Um, I basically start with with composing the music, uh, and when I get to the point where I start writing lyrics, you know, I always try to um, to write lyrics that kind of uh, describes, uh, or you know, basically just putting words to the, the feelings and emotions that is already there in the music. Um, and you know, at the end, when when the, all the songs are done, I try to find an album title that more or less sums up. Uh, the basics of, of the songs on the album and when we get to work with uh, the album co cover it's the same thing you know trying to uh, make a, uh, a cover that also you know represents the feelings that is in the music and um, and so yeah we try to make everything as much connected as possible and that it's like it's like this one big thing you know not like uh, a lot of different um, independent things just put together, you know. But but everything is like a big unity or, or or something like that. Yeah, and that's what I get from a Sirenia show too on the Threat Signal tour that you did three years ago. That's that was the most one of the most unifying shows I've ever been to. Like all the Threat Signal fans, all the Dire Peril fans, all of the all of your fans, and everybody at the show was just unifying together. So I consider Sirenia to really not just be a band, but just to be an overall experience. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm very, very happy to hear that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So uh, before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time. It's great to talk to you again. I can't believe it's been three years since the Threat Signal tour. Time really flies. Um, yeah, I really can't believe it myself either. You know, it's uh, time goes so fast, you know, and, and now we all kind of lost a whole year with the COVID situation. And, and it's, you know, kind of likely that we'll pretty much lose another year, you know. So I, I really can't wait, you know, to get back, back touring again. And um, yeah. I can't wait to, to get back to the U.S. and, and, and play again. It's uh, where, you know, we're, we're desperate <laughs> to get back on the road and, and perform yeah. perform our, our songs live, you know, especially now having a new album out and, and not being able to tour. It's just so frustrating, you know. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, it, w and I just know that people are so eager to mosh again that I, I even think if you play like your slowest ballad live, people are still gonna crowd kill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, That's how we all feel at this point, you know. We're we're so fed up with this whole situation. We yeah. we, we need some uh, some excitement or or something to happen in our lives again, basically. <laughs> yeah, I never would have thought that I would enjoy like waiting online at the DMV just because it made me feel like I was online for a concert. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> so. Uh, before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Is there just um, anything else uh, with Sirenia that you'd like to promote with the new album coming out Friday? Can we maybe get like a live stream performance or anything else that you would like to plug for Sirenia? Uh, we've been looking into it uh, at some point, um, but but for now it's it's kind of on hold, and um, and also it's kind of a little bit more complicated for us being you know. Uh, the whole band being pretty much spread all over Europe with me living in Norway, our drummer in England and our guitar player in Paris and our singer in all the way down south of France. So um, it, that kind of, you know, it, it wasn't really a problem for us before, but but during a pandemic, it, it definitely, you know, proved to be be kind of a, a problem or, or complicating things a lot. So. Um, at the moment, most of the plans are on ice, really. Uh, we're kind of monitoring the situation, hoping that we'll see improvements in, <coughs> in you know, every aspect. And, and um, you know, uh, things doesn't look so good until before the summer, at least, uh, I would say. But I really hope, you know, that we will be able to start touring again uh, by the end of the year. Um, so you know just keeping my fingers crossed you know that the vaccination programs and all this will, will be a huge success and that 
uh, that um, the pandemic will be under control the sooner the better basically yeah and uh, we look forward to that very day it'll definitely be worth the wait but thank you so much martin everybody we are here with martin of sirenia riddles ruins and revelations out via napalm records february 12th this friday pick it up then this is alex from heavy new york we will see you next time